What's up guys? So we are here gonna show off some big tips that you're gonna need to have for this insane vortex. This is the hardest vortex in the game. These land of plenty pro stages are no joke, guys. It is dangerous. If you don't have top tier units, you are in trouble or in for a long fight in for some lappy revives. The first time we went in there, we actually lost 300 lappies because we thought we were going to kill the final boss. We, okay, we'll kill the final boss. 100 lappies, no big deal. But there's three mega bosses that you have to kill there. If, you know, oh my god, before you get out of that dungeon. It's just insane. So, these are very important items. You want to have uh, these ethers. You want to have the turbo ethers because you're going to need to be able to restore your MP. Ethers aren't that great. They only restore 20 MP. Turbo ethers are definitely a lot better. There's also some other items that you're going to need. You're going to want to go and grab a whole bunch of tents. You want to bring at least, you can only bring one tent in each exploration mission, but you want to have a couple of these guys. You can buy these all in the shop here at Felicia Town. Felicia's Town. So you see right here, Colobos Isle. Bottom left, grab those guys. You want to bring antidotes as well. You want to bring phoenix downs as well. All these items that you never thought you were going to need in this game because you have these great units. But now, Land of Plenty Pro is here, and it is kicking everyone's butt. So let's jump right into a Land of Plenty Pro, show you what we got going here. Our squad is decent. We don't have amazing units that are, uh, you know, trust mastery to up. We just have basic units. We have Cloud of Darkness, which is our MVP. We don't even have Kefka, who Kefka is in insanely powerful here. Any Kefka with over 300 mag is really powerful. So I've never used him as a friend, but I'm hearing Kefka is insane here. So let's start this out. You can see we have Artemis. We have Cloud of Darkness. We have X-Death. And then we have our Terra there. No. Terra? I think it's Terra. I don't even know. We got our healing chick. Nope, we got Roselia. Sorry, Terra. And then Fina in there for the cheer. So let's jump in here. And you need to go get all of these checkpoints for one. Roselia is a great unit to have in here because she heals up for free with her limit burst. So we can just auto fight these guys. A very advanced tactic that people are using is just running away from these battles here. Using the escape ability, I believe it is. And you're able to get out of these these grunt battles without having to fight them. It's a very, you know, good skill for this situation because this does take time. And if you don't have a, a healer that is, you know, free limit break healing, you're going to end up using your, your MP and you don't want to waste your MP. I don't know if we actually restocked our items, so this could be bad here. Let me take a look at the items here. Yeah, we didn't really restock our items. We didn't put the ether on. So this could be ugly, guys. We got our first checkpoint over here. Cloud of Darkness is really powerful in this stage because he's got the um, like this passive that does 50% more damage. So he's going to get these weakness damage bonuses. And he's my biggest damage dealer that I have. Even a Chizuru with like 500 attack power doesn't really do that much damage to these guys. These guys have an insane amount of defense. So especially battles like this can take a lot of time and actually do a significant amount of damage. Again, if you don't have a healing limit break type unit, you could waste your MP. Thankfully, Roselia, we're going to learn that name and get it right. A little sad, and I didn't get my Terra in the last summons. Uh, so we are stuck with Roselia, who is a great healer, actually, for this. Sadly, she doesn't have any support moves or anything, but she does the healing job well, keeps the party alive. And then we have Fina as a backup healer. Fina is mainly here for the cheer ability, though. So with these bosses, you generally want to go, I think, all physical 
or all magic. We're going to split magic physical team here. We'll see how this works out. You want to have attackers of your physical that are over 500 attack power. So a lot of, you know, attack stats pretty much fully maxed out with weapons, armor, trust masteries, dual wielding if possible. Having that tent is very important though because you'll be able to restore all your MP, all your HP after the big slug slime fight because that guy drains your magic. If you don't kill him fast enough, he's going to just absorb all the magic you got from your whole squad and leave you in a world of hurt. The next two bosses are just insanely tanky. The next two bosses, I believe, are weak to magic. So we're going to see how Kefka does here. Kefka chaining his hyperdrives is insane from what I hear. So if you have a Kefka and you got a friend's Kefka, or maybe you got two or three Kefkas, going in this this whole exploration with the two or three Kefkas that all have really high magic probably can make this a walk in the park. If you got any other cool strategies and tips, post them down below. But pretty much if you don't have a lot of great units, you're probably not going to be able to do this. So with the difficulty of this stage being so hard, I'm almost positive that this is going to come back in the future. So Land of Plenty has been here once before in uh, the beta early access, and it was only up to stage three. Now they unlock this pro stage, and from what I'm seeing and how I'm playing and feeling this out, like it looks like this is going to be content that's going to be sticking around. It's going to be coming back every so often. They're only giving us four days to farm this cavern orb, and you can definitely do that. You do need about eight runs to farm enough to make one sword. And you can only get the cavern ore in the pro stage here. And you can farm the sword unlimited amount of times. The only problem is getting that cavern ore, so doing a lot of the pro stages. The stage is here around four days this time. I do think that it's going to come back in a month, two months, some amount of time. This I'm almost positive the Land of Plenty will come back. So if you are not strong enough right now, focus on just leveling up and progressing your heroes, making them stronger, and don't worry about it. I'm pretty sure that this stage will come back in the future. You can also use that Charm Bangle to reduce the encounter rates. These guys are kind of annoying. It does take a good amount of time to get there. So I do apologize for this. But we got to clean up all these spiders. Clean up all these monsters. All right, so we're at the boss stage. Let's get the cavern ore over there. And this one, oh, right as we get on there. So thankfully, all of the collection points are pretty easy. And at this point, we're going to now start building up our limit breaks just in case we need them in the boss battle here. So he's going to manually attack, start doing basic hits. So we can fill up all those limit gauges and come into the battle with full limit breaks pretty much on everyone. Ideally, with a really strong team, you want to kill the, the first boss, the slug slime thing, in about three turns.
All right, so we are ready to go. Let's see Kefka here, first time using him. For magic users, you do want to use the ice spells. Start off with a barrage there. We will cheer with Fina. Start the limit breaks. And let's see what happens here, guys. So the barrage there with Cloud of Darkness is doing 1,200 a hit. And we barely did any damage. Oh, and we just got drained of all our MP on Cloud of Darkness. That is not good. Roselli got drained of all her HP as well, or MP as well. Let's go try and hyperdrive with Kefka. At this point, we are going to go and give some MP. And I wish I had a bigger elixir to give. The barrage again. Yeah, see, this is going to hurt, guys. We don't have those bigger elixirs. Those... Yep, Cloud of Darkness lost his MP once again. So let's just keep this up. Let's keep hyperdriving here. He didn't do any damage whatsoever this turn. So Roselli can't really do much damage. Let's go and give Cloud of Darkness an elixir. We can use that right now. Give him his 20 MP and get that barrage off. Fina, we can use her limit break. And we are good to go here. There goes all the MPs. You're definitely in a world of hurt now. So Kefka does have enough to do that summon there, which is going to be great. We're going to have to give the MP to Cloud of Darkness so he can use his barrage. Because Cloud of Darkness is the strongest hero that we have in our group here. Yep, and at this point, we are ready to go. Really, the guy is not doing much damage to us. He's just draining all our MP. Which he's just being an annoying little freaking slime. Abobza. And this is where the 10 comes in handy. So after this fight... Oops, we're on auto. That's not good. That was not good. So after this fight, we're going to need our tent to restore our MP. Huh? What happened there? Okay. It's like, where's my MP? Don't have anything... All right, screw it. Let's just auto this. That barrage will do a decent chunk of damage. Let's 
use Kafka to give a elixir. Give me the MP! So this barrage should finish it off here. Uh, nope, I guess not. And then we'll just take him down. You can see how insanely powerful that guy was. Generally, Barrage is very effective against him, so it doesn't look like magic is a good strategy against that guy. We've been able to take him down with three Barrage users and Cheer in our last run. So definitely a lot harder with X-Death and Kefka here. Let's go ahead and use our tent now. So we click on the menu and use the tent, which is going to recover all HP and MP for all alleys. And we can actually get our limit breaks up if we want to by farming the basic enemies around here. But I think we're good for right now. So these guys are now more effective against magic. So Kefka should shine here with his limit break and hyperdrive. Let's go ahead and use Folk, or Faith here to boost Kefka's MP. Or mag, I should say. Cloud of Darkness, as you can see, is going to do a good chunk of damage here with his barrage. We're going to cheer, and then we're going to use barrage on Artemis. And we have nothing else here, so let's go ahead and just throw some light damage out there. Yeah, so Kefka did a good chunk of damage with that hyperdrive. Let's go through another hyperdrive with a blizzard now, barrage combo, and I think we shouldn't have much problem with the hill gigas here. Yeah, 9,000 points of damage with that hyperdrive. It's a good chunk of damage. So comboing those two hyperdrives, if you got two Kefkas or three Kefkas, will do a significant amount of damage and tear these guys to shreds. You're going to get some elemental chains as well. But even with all this big damage that we're doing, we're still slowly taking him down. We might lose Fina in this. Oh, yeah, we're going to lose Fina. Fina's dead. So at this point, we're going to use x -Death's Limit break. Hopefully we can get a blind. Blind is very effective. So if you're having trouble with Hill Gigas and then the last monster, the Ogre, blind is your best friend. Throw blind on there and his attacks will miss almost always. Let's go and use a Phoenix down on Fina. Use that first so she resurrects and gets the healing effects from Merzelia's Kajira. And hopefully... They stay alive. Hopefully there's no big magnitude 8 again. Yep, alright. Stayed alive. We didn't get a blind though, so that definitely sucks. If you have a full break, full break is very effective here as well.
So we might want to buff up Kefka again. Now that Hyperdrive is only doing around 6,700 because the magic buff wore off. Oh no. And we autoed. That is bad. We might die in this. Ooh, 25. Oh, please don't kill us. No, we're dead. Wow. Big mistake there. Um, we're in trouble. We are in trouble, guys. Oh yeah, we're definitely draw. I don't know if we're going to be able to do this. We're going to have to probably use some Lappies to resurrect on the next fight. Because we don't have a resurrection skill. And I don't think we have enough. We may even have to use some freaking resurrections here. Uh, I don't think we have enough Phoenix Downs. Oh, we have four. So we're okay there. Have to use an elixir. Get full HP. Maybe one more turn. The Blizzard did 1,500 points of damage. A decent chunk of damage there. And we've taken him down. So we have enough to resurrect everyone. Thank God we got lucky there. Four Phoenix Downs left. But one little mistake there with that auto fighting going through. We didn't get the Kajir off, which just totally screwed us. And we're still not out of this yet, guys. So we need to give MP back to Kefka and Cloud of Darkness. Give more MP to Fina as well so she can cheer. And we definitely need a basic fight up here to try and recover and to get a little bit more healthy for the next final boss. So we have a lot of good top tier units and we have a great friend here with over 300 and uh, you know 300 mag base stats and we are still struggling guys. It is very very hard so don't feel ashamed if you have to use lappies to revive. Again the first time I did this I had to use 300 lappies to revive three times. We're just going to use Fina's basic attack here so we can save up her limit break. See, even these little goblin mages are just a pain in the ass. Alright, finally. And now we're going to have most limit breaks filled up here. Let's do the final battle. So there's no shame in actually losing these battles and not doing this event because it's just too damn hard. No shame whatsoever. Alright, 
Alright, let's buff up. Let's actually debuff him with armor break. Alright, here we go. Let's see. How does hyperdrive work on Ogre? Oh, good chunk of damage there. Let's make sure we take the auto off. So hyperdrive again. And now Plazaga. Actually, it's a limit break there, and let's use our Kira there. Yep, we are ready to go. So if I didn't have a Cloud of Darkness, I definitely don't think I would be able to, to finish these stages. Cloud of Darkness does a good chunk here, so 800 points of damage per each barrage. If you don't have a Cloud of Darkness or a Kefka, I... Ugh. Post some tips down there if you don't have those kind of units. Because this is an insanely tough dungeon. The Artemis Barrage is only doing a few hundred points of damage. It's very, very ineffective. But that's just all I've got at, like... You can see those small hundreds points of damage there. And that's with a cheer on. Whoa, almost took out Cloud of Darkness there. That would be really bad. So we're going to double heal him up. Again, it's good to do all physical or all magic. Because then you'll have chains and combos going together. Oops, we didn't use Barrage on Cloud of Darkness. So the cool thing is, every time he's done this attack, he's always given us a free turn afterwards. He's kind of like, uh, dumbed out, and he doesn't attack after he does that big AoE hit to everyone. So that's a nice little feature. Yeah, see, unable to react. And you even see with a full MP almost on our units, we just burn through everything. We just don't have enough firepower. And these aren't just like weak, crappy units. These are top tier in-game units nearly maxed out the only thing that we don't have is trust masteries fina is down for the count now even need a heal no we are full here so let's just attack there get some more of those red crystals hope for some chains
yeah so if you got more tips post them down below insane battles here this is actually really really fun for me i love these kind of challenges and this is something that i think the game was severely lacking i did not expect to see any hard content coming out since we've got so many more units than japan at the at a quicker rate So if they can keep pumping out missions, bosses like this, stages that challenge you and make you actually think, I am in, in love, guys. I am totally in love. I know a lot of you probably are like, well, it's too hard. It's too hard. There are ways to beat it. It's not unbeatable, and that's the thing. It does suck that you do need to have some, you know, some really powerful units. But just think, you can also even make them stronger if you have uh, Trust Masteries. So if you've done an insane amount of grinding... Uh-oh, Cloud of Darkness is in trouble. I think Roselia... Oh no, she doesn't have anything. We're in trouble, guys. No Paralyzation Cure. Oh! All right, she needs her limit break. That will get rid of the paralyzation. Does that Artemis poison? Nope, nope, nope. And we are completely out of items. This is bad. So close. Okay, she got her limit break. Thank God. Come back to life, Cloud of Darkness, <gasps> my savior. Wow, that was so close. And we are still just like a smidge away. He could still kill us, guys. This is crazy. He might actually kill us. Yep, he's going to kill us. Oh my god, we don't have enough MP. How much is it gonna do? Oh, a sliver! Oh, he's unable to attack! We're gonna beat him! With no lap, he's such a close fight. Wow. Such an epic conclusion there. We made a lot of mistakes. Definitely didn't fill up our inventory. And we barely scratched through that. If we got into another random battle right now, we would die. We would die to random battles. And we get our cavern ore, iron ore. And more importantly, we could actually leave the dungeon with all our items. Wow. So close. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for checking out the channel. Hopefully you had fun. Hopefully you're able to take this down or at least attempt it in you know, appreciate the challenge that we're actually having rather than just auto fighting every single battle nonstop. So only nine cavern ores, which means we're going to end up having to do uh, this around nine times to get enough to make that sword. Again, thanks for watching guys. Make sure to hit that like button if you survived all the way to the end here of this video. I will talk to you later.